Customs officers also take on gangs involved in carousel fraud, which steal money from the VAT system. It works like this. Criminals set up fake companies to import high-value goods VAT-free. The goods get exported back out to fake companies in Europe, at which point VAT is reclaimed. These shipments get stamped at the border, but then simply turn around and come back into the UK. The same goods go in and out of the country again and again. In 2001, a man by the name of Ray Cox was at the centre of a carousel fraud so massive it would take the next six years to bring him to justice. By looking at him and financial profiling of uh, Ray Cox, uh, we basically determined that in a space of three years, he'd gone from being a, a pallet repairer um, to a multi-millionaire. He became a major thorn in the side of, uh, of attacking the UK's uh, VAT system, and uh, we, we embarked on what became an eight-month long surveillance operation uh, against Raymond Cox to identify those he was associating with, those he was trading with. We effectively identified a total of seven people. They were just average people, so they weren't particularly well-educated people and certainly uh, not with a business background. Day after day, the surveillance team looked on as the fraud increased. Cox and his six accomplices gradually lost control. The goods were going round and round on the carousel so fast, they forgot who was selling what to who. They, they, they became blasé, and uh, as often you see within uh, fraudulent, activities, they, they did get greedy. Um, it's, it's too much of a good thing. In May 2002, it culminated in a meeting at the Trafford Centre in Manchester at a restaurant called Tiggy's about keeping the fraud on track. And, of course, they were unaware that they were un under surveillance at the time. The surveillance team tracked all the suspects to the meeting and captured it all on film. Whereupon we were all able to get inside and, in effect, get into the CCTV control room for the Trafford Centre, uh, zoom in and record the whole meeting, uh, a surveillance officer's dream. With the gang making around £10 million a week from the fraud, tensions were clearly running high. The meeting at the Trafford Centre was the first time that they'd actually all been filmed together. Come the end of the meeting, when the paperwork appeared to be sorted out, they all got up and it was very jovial, much backslapping, hugging, as if there were no problems. But in fact, their problems were about to get a lot worse. The officers had decided enough was enough. On the morning of the 8th of July 2002, the carousel of the conspiracy was taken out. The 217 fake companies had stolen over £180 million, and it took four years to sift through the mountains of paperwork. The nine-month trial found six of the seven guilty as charged, who all received at least five years in prison. Seen as the organiser, Cox received...